it's phenomenal. The, <laughs> I know. It gives me everything I want in life. The dynamite chicken at Noodles Express might be the best. I'm addicted. But I, you- I knew you would be. I got you started on it a year ago. Yeah. Like there's days where I've had it for lunch and went back there and got it for dinner. Yeah. Uh, but you think the shrimp, dynamite shrimp at mustard seed is yeah, better. You- uh, I had that a couple of weeks ago. But not crazy better for the amount of money that you pay. It's different right. from Noodles Express. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like the value of Noodles Express is so well, good. I don't know how many chicken teriyaki bowls I've had in my lifetime. Yeah, it was a mistake. Huge mistake if I could go back. <laughs> but it's amazing. Uh, do you go to the mall often? Only if I'm eating at Mustard Seed or going to Noodles Express. That's it. Yeah. Well, apparently, I'm a big shopper. Apparently, there's a lot of changes going on at the mall. Okay. Saw this article last week, like the Blaze 96.3 posted about all these new stores. Apparently, we have a J Crew. Don't know what that is. Um, Daily Thread. No idea. I don't know what that is either. Um, Concept. Okay. I have no yeah. idea. Um, but the mall is revamping. Texas Roadhouse. I am pumped for that. But every dollar spent at Texas Roadhouse is a dollar that could have been spent at Noodles Express That's a good point. on Dynamite Chicken. That's a good point. So, um, Mary's Mountain Cookies is opening a new location I, in the mall. Those are solid. Have you had those? Are you a crumble guy? I don't eat sweets. You know oh, that right. about me. I bet. Yeah. But that's exciting um, for girls everywhere. Anyway, there's all kinds of... Where do you get your news source, Missoula? Things going on. I see these random Facebook um, posts. Yeah, they'll, pretty much 96.3 The Blaze. They do a really good job. Um, they have really good hooks. There. I get this magazine in the mail. Okay. Called... Missoula Valley Lifestyle started showing up. Uh, incredible periodical. Periodical. I sound like I'm 80. Uh, uh, it's got like, it's kind of like the print version of the Missoula podcast. It's got stories of what's coming in Missoula, um, unique businesses that started, uh, startups that just kind of came out of nowhere. Uh, I've read it. I, I look forward to it each month. Great source of just news and community. Mm-hmm. Um, which leads me to today's podcast. Mike Tucker. Mike Tucker, owner, editor of Missoula Valley Lifestyle Magazine. Um, he is so well connected in Missoula, like the source for all information. And uh, you and I had the opportunity to sit down with him and hear about the magazine, his mountain climbing expeditions. Yeah. Uh, such, such a great guy. He's a really fun guest. I'm excited for you guys to see, your, <laughs> see and hear Michael Tucker. <laughs> Mike Tucker. Here it is, Missoula Podcast with Michael Tucker. Mike Tucker, welcome to the Missoula Podcast. Yeah, thank you guys for inviting me. This is going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting. I'm I'm really excited for uh, a couple different conversations I want to have with you. Uh, First of all, uh, the way we got connected was for the last couple of years, about every four weeks, I get this this random magazine started showing up in my mailbox called Missoula Valley lifestyle and is uh, I love it because the stories in there are all local, local stories. It it really is kind of the print version of what we're doing on this podcast of just highlighting people in our community and just unique stories and uh, have the most recent copy here and love it. Quality, quality piece. And as I'm looking through it, I just trying to find more like, Hey, who's the editor who owns this? And I come across this guy by the name of Mike Tucker and reach out to you and we get connected and our paths have never crossed. And now in the last couple of months, I see you everywhere. Yeah. Um, but Missoula Valley lifestyle magazine, what, what's, what is it? What's, what's the, why, what's the story of this magazine that is just showing up in people's mailboxes every month? Um, well, uh, kind of to start from the beginning, um, I was in uh, marketing with radio stations for many, many years before this, uh, left there uh, going on nine plus 10 years now. And anyway, I, I have a marketing company also, and we got together and uh, they, I, I point blank asked them, I go, I know what you do. What do you need? And they all said pretty much the same thing as we need something that's local, something that's, you know, not opinionated, something that's not politics, but something that's high quality shows our brand. Uh, then I was working on uh, um, some some businesses on a national level, and uh, lifestyle magazines were popping up. And I said, you know, and 
as I would just, Missoula needs this. It needs something positive, uh, something yeah. that shows our little community, you know, isn't just what they read about in the National Grizz News or something, you know, something on a national level. Uh, we are local. We are people that care about each other. And anyway, uh, flew into Kansas City and talked to the owners of Lifestyle or City Lifestyle now. And they gave me their philosophy of um, it's a very hometown magazine. It's that we are community. Um, there's only so many of us and we're all together. Uh, so I thought, well, let's try this. I brought it back to the marketing company and showed them this is what it is. This is what you asked for. Let's give it a go. Uh, we just turned our hundredth issue. Wow. So, so that's, uh, the community actually took it on themselves. Um, my staff is tremendous. Uh, you know, I have Chelsea, we have a lot of the writers have been with me since almost the beginning of this. And so they believe in it as much as I do. So it, ha- it really has nothing to do with me anymore. It has, the community is, mm-hmm. have, has organically taken it. Um, and that's how we got it started was uh, it was just kind of a leap of faith because when I first brought it in, everybody looked at it going, uh, just another marketing piece to take my money. Mm. Um, then all of a sudden it just kind of turned into people want it. People read it. We have over 60,000 readers a month yeah, that open it up and see it. That's phenomenal. That's a huge, that's almost all of Missoula. That's uh, a lot of Missoula. That's a lot of Missoula. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's phenomenal. Thank you. What were some of the most, the biggest challenges on getting this off the ground to where it is as successful as it is now? Um, a lot of the challenges were kind of what I mentioned was um, the people that believed in what I was doing at the time. Um, it was something that, you know, I, I've been a Montana boy my whole life. I knew people already in businesses. They've supported me. I've supported them. And I wanted some way to get the Missoula, a readership to show what, what those businesses are, not as an advertorial style, but the back end, mm-hmm. you know, who they are as people, who they are as, um, you know, what they do with our community. And I want, when people open the magazine up back then, I know that person. It's cool. And then go talk to that person and say, Hey, I, I read about you. Yeah. It makes uh, gives I, I do that every point. month. I look through it and like, who do I know who's in here this month? And yeah, it, it, it's phenomenal. Uh, are, Mike, are you originally from Missoula? Are you, you said you're uh, originally I'm from Haver. Haver. Yeah. Okay. How'd Haver. you end up in Missoula? Um, kind of a long story. I, uh, um, grew up in Haver left there. We had, um, you know, family up there and then long story short, went to school in Bozeman. I uh, went to school for a year in Bozeman. Oh, hey, hey, let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> yeah, I, I played some sports over there, and okay. then I, I came over here and got educated. <laughs> okay, that, okay. That's better. I, like that's, that. I, I tell that to everybody, that's too, awesome. so not just you. Um, but, yeah, I came over here and got educated, met my wife. Uh, missed is her name. Uh, been together 36 years of marriage and never left and have four grandkids that's coming awesome. now. So. What are some of your earliest memories of Missoula when you pulled into town for the first time? What, what stood out to you? Um, the mountains, Yeah. uh, you know, the M up on the thing. And I've always, you know, being from Bozeman at the time and Haver, everybody in Haver kind of went to, went to Bozeman. Yeah. It was just kind of the tradition. And, uh, we came over here for a, a Grizz Cat game. Back then it was a cat grizz game, but now it's, it's, it's grizz cat. Grizz cat. You got it right. Yeah. yeah. Well done. And anyway, came over here and I just looked at the awesomeness of it. Yeah. Um, you know, and the camaraderie back then. And the other part was I was a, I was a big drinker. Um, you know, I quit, quit drinking 10 years ago and kind of sobered myself up. And, but back then it was just a fun party town. It was a college town. And I think if, um, that was the main thing that caught me at that age, you know, I was 21, 22 years old and had everything I ever wanted, but no money to do it. (laughs) So it sounds like a lot of people that come to Missoula. That's us. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What what was your degree in? Uh, communications and economics. Awesome. So, so where'd that take you? You'd mentioned you worked in radio and marketing. Was that right away? Did you get into that? Yeah. And then, uh, got into, um, radio with a 
old radio station back then, XT93. And uh, they hired me on, and we just, I never left the radio after that. Uh, and then it just kind of, uh, mm-hmm. I was there for, God, 18 years plus, maybe. And um, then it, the market just changed, radio industry just changed. Um, then I decided, you know, I'm going to take what I know and give it to the people that are supporting me. And that's how we started our, it's called the Tucker Entertainment Group Company. And on top of that, I started a concert company, which we brought in. Um, back then, we brought in from Blake Shelton when he had the mullet. Uh, <laughs> we didn't sell out the Wilma U. Crazy. Uh, wow. Yeah. I, you know, all the up-and-comers, we had Trace Atkins, we had Big and Rich. We brought them all in back at back in that time. And um, uh, me and a group of other guys, fellas, uh, in business, uh, financed it. And I'll tell you now, if you're, uh, if you ever want to get in the music industry, um, you better be a gambler and be able to burn a million bucks in your driveway. Cause that's how it, because you're the last person to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> so, but it was fun. It was a, it was a life changing thing, but that's how I kind of got into the, the business marketing out of college. And, um, and then I started actually during college, I forgot about that. I started a, a small chili company called Amanda's Chili. My oldest daughter's named Amanda. And I was working at Grizzly Grocery for Scott Willis. Uh, he owned it at the time, and uh, we were making it back in the kitchen and selling it out of there. And uh, there was a um, club on campus that I was involved in called the Entrepreneur Club. Oh, cool. And so I got a hold of them, and they, they came. They marketed for me. They did everything. You know, they went and put my business plan together. And so we did that for about four years. And then I just got the feel of entrepreneurship. Yeah. And that's, that's where we, we tipped the iceberg with it. And it was just kind of a fun ordeal. And then it brought us all the way to where I am today and kind of a person that um, wants to give back to the community mm-hmm. through his magazine, as well as uh you know, a little bit of everything else. Yeah. What was that transition like from a lengthy career in radio to owning and being an editor of a magazine? Uh, frightening. Yeah. 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 It was really frightening. It was a situation where um, you have to take the risk. Yeah. Because you don't know what you can do until you do it. And that was something my wife and I discussed. I was looking at it. Um, I remember the conversation my wife and I had when we came, like I flew back and I said, Hey, I think we're going to start a magazine. And she looked at me like, (laughs) okay. She, and she's very understanding, but it was one of those. Okay. (laughs) How are we going to do it? We don't have the money. We don't have this. I go, we just have to have the faith to do it. Mm -hmm. Magazine can do it. We have support from family. And her family supported, my family supported, and the friends that I have today all are still supporting it. Mm-hmm. And we we brought in a lot of new new friends from it. That's awesome. This support. I, I, go ahead. Oh, it just sounds like your roots here in Missoula are so, you know, important to you. Uh, and it gave you this opportunity to, you know, I, I know my friends are going to come through is kind of the what the vibe that I'm hearing. Yeah. And what I'm interested in is, is, is it seems like to me that like the magazine business was kind of going yeah. south when you started to jump in. Yeah. So how did you sell that to a lot of people during that period? Um, the way the, the plan is, especially with this magazine, um, Stephen and Matthew that own City Lifestyle, when I talked to them, they have a totally different concept of print. What it is, what print is with, they, with them is it's a direct mail piece to the right people, frequency, right time that shows quality without your opinion. Mm. Um, and it, it's something that even, you know, 10 years ago when I started it is even more valid today. Yeah. Uh, because we we actually increased our readership throughout COVID, which uh, which blew me away. Yeah. Uh, because people are sitting on their couch 
worrying about stuff. Our magazine would show up. It's something that they don't throw away because it looks quality. Yeah, it does. Um, and that's that's something that. It's so funny. I have a stack of them on my <laughs> home office. They they don't get thrown away. Yeah, they thank you. Them. And the uh, fun fun thing about it too is that when people get it, they they collect them like yeah. that. They love they love our co- coverage because they're local. Our photographers are amazing. Um, but to kind of go around, uh, print was going down. Print is today, but we went up um, because of the niche we have. We have a more, uh, we started out with a more affluent audience. Um, you know, homes that were 500 to 3 million is where we deliver it to um, every month. And now we're, we bumped up to 750, which is an average home in Missoula, Montana. But our footprint expanded because people want it. Word of mouth, you know, just organically, word of mouth is the best marketing anybody can have. Um, we now have probably, uh, you know, 1,500 to 2,000 that go down to the Scottsdale areas and the retiree areas that their primary homes are here. Their secondary homes are there. They want a piece of their Missoula when their friends walk in. Up to Phillips or, you know, down to Phillipsburg, up to Thompson Falls. So our footprint went from, you know, an eight-mile radius of the valley. And it just grew uh, because Everybody wants to read something positive. We've had everything opinionated thrown down our throats for the last three, four years. Yep. And we're not that. Mm-hmm. Oh. We, we want your story. Mm-hmm. You've got just over 100, 103, 105 maybe issues out. Is that accurate? You yeah. guys hit 100 earlier this summer? Yeah, we this hit 100 uh, yeah, two months ago. Two months ago. Um, I would imagine there's probably a little bit of sense of pride inside of you. When you mm-hmm. see the final each issue, when it shows up at your doorstep of a, wow, yeah. we did it again. Oh, we've got a phenomenal team. Mike, over the last hundred issues, do you have a favorite issue? Is there one that you look at? And the just, next one to come out. Really? <laughs> always, <laughs> always. Always the next always, one. Always. Um, because I can, I can see, you know, from the birth of it to the next, yeah, the next one coming out. Um, the Chelsea, my editor is so creative and she, she's the reason that goes out. Mm-hmm. Um, the way the business works with me is we've set it up a little bit different than normal business to where I let her have total control of what you see there, mm-hmm. wording, everything. Um, I take care of the sales part of it and, you know, this other part with my assistant, Marla, and she does all our social media. So it's something that. I'm almost surprised too when I see it, (laughs) but we meet once a month, you know, with the whole staff and we talk through, okay, what stories are we going to do? Let's talk three months down the road. Where are we with it? Mm -hmm. And I'm involved in all that. How far out are you guys on like what, what is dropping in November? I'm sure you're working on that months in advance. Yeah. 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 We have different themes. Uh, We have the, um, you know, the giving theme for coming up in Thanksgiving. We have the Christmas, December, January, February, March, we're all, we already have the stories planned, which doesn't mean we're going to do it if something better comes up. Right. But um, it's amazing how many stories people send us because they're reading going, my grandpa, you know, grew up in Zula, Zula, and, you know, he, he did this during Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, just things like that, that people send us because it, it's something that the community owns. Yeah. And they, they want to be part of it. So at the start, you're going out and hunting for stories. And then now yeah. the job's getting basically done for you. Yeah. Which is a great, a great way to do business. Oh, it's a great way to do business. It's, um, you know, we still go out and look. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, you're right. When we first started, we had to go, you know, talk to Fred, the banker, or, you yeah. know, what's your grandchild doing today? <laughs> you know, just to get it going. I want to change gears here a little bit. Earlier on, you said when you came to Missoula, you loved the mountains. And I know in the last couple of years, you have become just an extreme hiker, mountain climber. Um, probably should have a documentary on your 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 national travels. Um, your uh, both wrists are covered in bracelets from what? What? Yeah, yeah. Tell me about those. Um, it's it was kind of weird. I had a um, soul searching ex- situation. My 
my mom and dad, brother and sister all passed away. I lived in Missoula for uh, 30 years. I never climbed the M. Really? Never climbed the M. And then my youngest daughter uh, goes, Dad, let's go do this. And I go, okay. I've been, I look at that thing every morning, every morning, and I've never been up there. She took me up there. It was, it was quite the little hike for a, you know, 40 pound overweight guy at the time. But we got up there and I looked around and I thought, wow, this is beautiful. So then I took the next level. I kept going, you know, I went to the top. Um, then my wife and I started snowshoeing a lot mountains and next thing i thought of i i'm going you know life's too short i'm gonna start living for the moment you know my family is at on the top of the mountains i can say hi to them Hmm. um you know i can talk to my parents up there but i have to get there first and the only way i've learned to do that is baby steps just like life Mm -hmm. you take baby steps and everything to get to where you're going uh, you mentioned the bracelets, you know, this is Mount Rainier, Mount Baker. Uh, this is my tent thing from so just Adams. Pieces of your tent, rope, something Ropes. something from each. Yeah, some from each little town I've been in or part of the climb. Um, and it's, uh, I've soloed most of them because it's, it's my, it's my time. It's where I can think, I can unstress. I can actually talk to the people that aren't around me. Oh. And I don't mean, you know, like somebody walking down an alley talking to themselves. No, mm-hmm. it's, it, it's, there's kind of a soul thing there that you just kind of blend in with who you're talking to and why they're talking to you and they're not here anymore. And these mountains you're climbing now, I mean, these are 13, 14,000 feet yeah. in elevation. This is not hiking up to the M. No, these it, ones, it, uh, it, I made, um, I want to go as high as I possibly can. Uh, I've done, you know, 14,000ers. Uh, last year, I did all of the uh, Northern Cascade volcanoes, the glacier volcanoes, um, you know, from Mount Hood to Shasta to um, Baker, boy, Hood, all of them. And I just wanted to prove to myself I could do it. Mm-hmm. And I, I'm lucky to have a life that I can do that. but it's it's just something that i become obsessed with it really uh and i have a kind of a a personality where once i quit drinking i had to do something (laughs) sure you know i'm sorry but it's one of those things that instead of sitting socializing in a bar you know i socialize with people all week long Mm -hmm. then i can go out and look at a mountain and go okay there's twelve thousand feet i gotta make what was your last mountain uh last mountain was called the uh Mailbox Peak. It's uh, over in Washington, correct? Yeah. Yeah. yeah outside of Seattle. It's not very tall, but it is a 60% Ooh. incline. How high was it? Uh, 4,800 incline or um, 4,800 feet elevation. Good gained, yeah. in, gained incline. Wow. So that was a burner. That was a burner. It was well worth it. Um, There's a mailbox up there that you put letters in and whatever you want. And mm-hmm. I have sponsors. I put their... You know, there, there are logos up there with it, but I also put in uh, three letters to, you know, to my mom and dad, um, my fa- father-in-law, my wife did, and my grandson did one for Santa Claus. That's awesome. So I had to make it up there. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah. Um, so you said you quit drinking about 10 years ago. Yeah. Why did you decide to do that? And it sounds like it took a positive turn in your life. Yeah. Yeah. It was, um, I drank, you know, I'm a, I was as the old country song says, I was born with a beer in my hand. From Haver, of course. From Haver. From Haver. <laughs> yeah, as we assumed. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, if you had sideburns, you could buy beer. Um, so anyway, yeah, it was, uh, it was a great way, place to grow up. It was wonderful. Uh, but I, I was just getting to the point of I had to be the party. And I drank scotch. I'm an Irish-Scottish person. Uh, my whole family drank scotch. And... I I would notice that my friends were all all coming around because I was buying a lot. I would buy, and they'd have three beers in front of me, and I'd only have one scotch because I could drink that scotch so fast that I'd buy another round. Anyway, and my wife noticed, you know, she was she was 
very supportive of everything I do, but it was, it was starting to get tough on her, you know, because I was just being the Mike Tucker, my ego would take over, you know, everything was about me. And then I thought I put myself into rehab one on our anniversary and, you know, I didn't come home till late on my anniversary, um, you know, 10 years ago. And that was it. That was the last straw. You know, I put myself into rehab. Oh, I mean that awareness and just humility. When you say everything was about Mike Tucker to all of a sudden realize, Hey, I need to do something about this. I mean, it speaks volumes. Just, yeah. Thank you. I mean, it it was just something that it's a totally clean life, you know, and I'm not saying I still go out. I still socialize, still go to bars. Um, I'm not telling anybody not to drink. It's just not, it's just not for me. You know, there's, there's reasons for it. And, you know, I'd rather go out and, you know, climb a mountain mm-hmm. than sit, sit down and have a couple of beers. But one of the biggest things, you know, kind of in there was after I got a re- rehab, about six months after that, my wife and I went down to the depot and uh, we had dinner. Um, it was wonderful. And I get the check back and it was 80 bucks. And I'm looking at it going, this is wrong. <laughs> Normally it's like 200 some. Because I'm drinking sure. and I'm buying drinks and I'm being Mr. Oh, big shot. Uh, it was 80 bucks. And I still remember that today that if I keep this going, I can actually save money. And lo and behold, I can't save money, but it's, it's a lot funner. <laughs> <laughs> What's next for you? What, what mountain? Um, uh, next, next one is my plan. Anyway, um, I was going to go down to the Grizz game at, um, Flagstaff this weekend. I just got back from conferences in Ca- uh, Kansas city. I was going to jump a plane and, uh, do uh Humphrey down in Flagstaff. It's a 13,000, 14,000 one there. And then I was going to go to the Grizz game after that. And I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> no offense. Um, it, I wasn't ready for it and I'm tired today, but, uh, and I still love the Grizz and I'll leave it at that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that's good. Uh, well, we love, we love hearing your story and and just how much you love this community. So we got some blazing five. I call it. What's on blazing five works. It's, it works. It's our rapid five. We just got some quick questions for you on, on Missoula, Mike. Uh, what, what's your favorite coffee shop in Missoula? Um, I'm going to have to say the, um, um, Floco. Floco. Yeah. yeah. Cause my wife takes me there. Sure. Nice. Yeah. And that's where we lose our money. <laughs> it's no longer alcohol. It's the coffee. Alcohol budget it's coffee. Coffee. I, and it's, I, I literally turned into a caffeine junkie. Sure. Yeah. I'll drink Red Bull all day and coffee and, but yeah, no, I have to go. Floco. Yeah. Okay. What's your favorite restaurant? Um, Montana clubs. Oh yeah. Yeah. I love those places. You can get anything that's yeah. the biggest menu in the world i mean it has everything i want uh and right right next to it would probably be like paradise falls yeah. i mean they have everything i want do you have a go-to at the montana club or do you continually mix it up have you become a you mean do you have a habit as... yeah do you have a routine do you have a meal that you get at montana club yeah or yeah what's your, um, what's your go-to i'm a creature of habit uh you know in the afternoons when i go there i'll get their blt uh-huh. it's phenomenal yeah um, same with Paradise Falls, you know, I compete and the, uh, Montana club. I love their, um, the Asian salad and yeah, on top of it, um, it just depends on what mood I am, but it's normally a salad of some sort or, you know, yeah, they've got like two pages of salads on their, their menu. I mean, their menu is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, and I like when they, they, they always have something new in there that, and they have gluten-free, my wife's celiac. And that's one of the biggest things, too, yeah. mm-hmm. is they cater to, they were one of the first ones to cater to her. Yeah. And that was great. That's awesome. So. What zip code do you live in? Uh, 59808. 59808, guy. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, obviously, you've seen the bumper stickers that say, keep Missoula weird. Mm-hmm. To you, what is the weirdest thing about Missoula? Oh, I'm going to go back to the people. <laughs> easy. <laughs> yeah. Easy answer. Yeah. It can't be anything but those people out there. I mean, 
If it wasn't for them, we would not. Well, I can't say we wouldn't be weird, but, you know, it's always entertaining to watch because there's always something different every day. People watching is amazing. Yeah. Missoula. Uh, on the flip side, Mike, what do you love the most about Missoula? Uh, not flipping. It's the people again. Yeah. Um, the people are so genuine. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, they're the people you can go to. I've been to a lot of big cities. I've gone everywhere. Uh, travel a lot. And the best part of those trips are coming back to Missoula because people here are genuine. Yeah. They will give you the bat shirt off their back or they will take your shirt. You just got to know which people they are. <laughs> it's well yeah. said. It's very, that is well very said. Very well said. So, uh, do you ever see in the future, do you ever see Missoula Valley Lifestyle doing a story on Mike Tucker and your amazing story of where you were, where you've come? And Yeah, they did. My, my editor and writers um, did a story on me. I don't want the magazine to be about me, mm-hmm. um, but they, they did a story uh, a while back on my my climbs and my journey Mm -hmm. and that was a you know six eight months back um it was wonderful brought tears to my eyes because i could actually see other people seeing it yeah and so and it was something that i i looked at that it was in words and that was a cool thing that's really cool (laughs) yeah if uh somebody listening to this wants more information on the magazine wants to reach out to you what's Website, contact information, how can we get them in touch with? Yeah, uh, just have them uh, email me at uh, mtucker at citylifestyle.com. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, that would be the, I'm always there, I always have my phone on and always checking messages. So If somebody's not getting the magazine in the mail and would like to see a copy, is there a place on the website where they can yeah. request a copy? Yeah, they can go to our, uh, you know, the city lifestyle slash Missoula Valley, uh, get it there and or just email me at that M Tucker at City Lifestyle, and I'll put you on my list. It's a free publication, and I want everybody to read it. It's awesome. Yeah, it's really nice. You guys are doing a great job. Thank yeah. you. I really appreciate how much you guys are highlighting, just like we've said over and over, unique stories, great businesses. There's so many wonderful people in this town. You guys are doing a really great job of, of highlighting that. Thank you. We yeah, well, no, Mike, that. thank you for coming in. I know you are up against a deadline to get next month's magazine out later today. Yeah. So we'll let yeah. you go, but... Uh, just thank you for your your love for our city, and uh, that's what makes Missoula great is people like you that generally care about people like you. And uh, I just appreciate the work you're doing, and it's been an honor getting to know you the last couple months and look forward to the future. Yeah, and well, thank you guys for doing this. I mean, this is amazing for the community also, so thank you guys. Of course. Awesome. All right, I thank appreciate you, Mike. that. Thanks for your time. <laughs>